Now, our true goal for these inquiries is to go beyond two-dimensional vector fields and consider how these operations of curl and divergence generalize to 3D. Let's start with divergence. Let's say that we have a vector field, f, in 3D. Then the divergence of f is a scalar field that is given by the following. You take the partial of the x component, fx, with respect to the x variable, plus the partial of fy with respect to y, plus the partial of fz with respect to z. Now, what does this mean? This divergence measures the local expansion or contraction of the volume element at a given point. So positive divergence is expansion. Negative divergence is contraction. One way to think about this is you look at the rate of change of a volume element, dv, normalized by the volume, v, and then consider what is happening instantaneously at a particular point in space and time. So if you've got this volume element and it's inside of a vector field, think of that vector field as flowing and then pushing the volume element along. What happens to the volume of that volume element as it gets evolved by the vector field? If you measure the rate of change of that volume and get something positive so that it's expanding, that corresponds to positive divergence. Shrinking corresponds to negative divergence. That's what divergence means physically. Let's look at an example where we can see this in action. Consider the simple vector field AXI plus BYJ plus CZK, where A, B, and C are constants. Then the divergence of f is given by the partial of the i term with respect to x, plus the partial of the j term with respect to y, plus the partial of the k term with respect to z. In this case, this is simple. That's a plus b plus c. Now, what does this mean? Well, let's consider what happens when we take a small box, a little volume element that has one corner at the origin and has its opposite corner at a point x naught, y naught, z naught that is nearby. How does the volume of this box change if we evolve it according to the vector field? Well, the origin certainly remains fixed, but that opposite corner is evolving. It's being pushed along by the vector field. How that evolves is going to depend, certainly, on these constants a, b, and c, but the length might be uh, stretching or contracting, and the width might be increasing or decreasing, and the height might be increasing or decreasing, depending on these. That volume is going to evolve. Now let's think about this a bit more carefully. The curves that are tangent to the vector field are solutions to the differential equations where dx dt is a times x, and dy dt is b times y, and dz dt is c times z. Now think back, think way back to single variable calculus when you learned how to solve such simple, linear, ordinary differential equations. The solution to dx dt equals ax is x naught, the initial condition, times e to the at. Similar things happen for y and z. We get that y is y naught e to the bt, z is z naught e to the ct, a single variable calculus tells us. Now, let's apply this to what is happening to this small volume element. If I let the corner of the box evolve according to these differential equations, I get that the volume of the evolved box is x naught times e to the at times y naught e to the bt times z naught e to the ct. If I take that volume as a function of time and compute the relative rate of change, dv over v, at t equals zero, what I get is a plus b plus c. That is the divergence of the vector field. Now, does that mean that we've proved that divergence is measuring the rate of change of volume? No. We have not proved it. We have simply observed that this is a reasonable interpretation in one simple example at one 
particular point. What is true and wonderful about divergence is that it is measuring this relative rate of change of volume at every single point in space.